To catch all the latest episodes, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. In 1992, scientists discovered an important communication system in the brain and the body, which they called the endocannabinoid system, named after the cannabis plant. The identification of THC, which stands for delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol as the main psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, occurred in the mid-1960s. Raw and live cannabis actually tends to be low in THC compared to its precursor, THCA, which stands for tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, which is non-intoxicating. However, as the plant dries, THCA slowly converts to THC. Heat expedites this conversion in a process known as decarboxylation, a fancy word that describes what happens when you smoke or vaporize flour. 20 years after the discovery of THC, scientists identified the sites in the brain and the body where can cannabis acts and called these areas cannabinoid or CB receptors. Scientists then discovered the body's own natural chemicals, anandamide and 2-AG, which stands for 2 arachidonyl glycerol, which also act on CB receptors. These chemicals, produced naturally by the brain, are called cannabinoids, and along with their receptors, make up the endocannabinoid, or EC, system. Along with the two brain cannabinoids mentioned before, there are also at least 113 different cannabinoids in the cannabis plant, with various effects on the body and the brain. This EC system is found in many areas of the brain, which explains why cannabis can affect so many different body functions. Cannabinoids exert their influence by regulating how cells communicate with each other, how they send, receive, or process messages. Cannabinoids are kind of like a dimmer switch. They slow down communication between cells. THC binds to cannabinoid receptors, and there are two of them, CB1 and CB2. CB1 cannabinoid receptors are found throughout the nervous system, while CB2 receptors are primarily found in immune cells. Today, we're going to focus on CB1 receptors. It is this receptor that, when THC binds to it, generates psychoactive effects. This leads to the release of certain neurotransmitters throughout the nervous system. CB1 receptors in the cortex and hippocampus may be involved in perceptual and cognitive effects. This is how I personally gain tremendous insight and perspective into how my mind and body operates when sober. Now, CB1 receptors in the basal ganglia and cerebellum may be involved in sedation and effects on movement. Now, I cannot underscore enough the benefits of sedation from THC as I use it as a preventative for my somatic panic attacks as well as during meltdowns when I feel like I need to escape from my body. I also use it to counteract OCD flare-ups. CB1 receptors in the spinal cord and the brainstem may be involved in analgesic or pain relief effects. Funny enough, this actually helps me exercise on a higher level as I have many lingering injuries that prior to my use of cannabis would prevent me from working out at the intensity I need in order to achieve a calm state of mind through the rest of the day. So that's all for now. Just a short synopsis of a uh, cannabis plant, very short. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, HAG, High Autistic Guy, for more insights surrounding autism, mental health, and cannabis.